Towards instant calibration in myelectric prosthetic hands, a highly data efficient controller based on the Wasserstein distance. We present a new distance based prosthetic hand controller. Our aims are to use minimal data to train the controller, reduce user calibration time, and test the controller on real world tasks. Muscle activity signals are recorded from an electrode armband around the user's forearm. We take the mean absolute value of this signal to generate its envelope. We then look at a 0.1 second rolling window of these signals. EMG signals can be thought of as existing on a cylindrical plane where the wrapped dimension is the circumferential position around the forearm at which the signal was recorded, and the linear dimension is the intensity of the signal. This allows us to look at recorded signals in terms of their position as well as their intensity. To estimate the distribution that produced the observed signals, we use kernel density estimation. The kernel is made up of a truncated Gaussian in the linear dimension, which is limited by the upper and lower sensing limits of the electrode armband, and a von Mises distribution, also known as a circular Gaussian, in the wrapped dimension. Together, they form a kernel that wraps in one dimension and is truncated in the other dimension. We apply this kernel density estimation to the incoming signals, resulting in an estimated distribution at each point in time. We compare the estimated distribution to a library of reference distributions, and classify the user's intention based on the distance between them. We use the Wasserstein distance to compare two distributions. We first resample points from each kernel density estimate. Then we use Sinkhorn divergences to approximate the Wasserstein distance with a cylindrical distance metric. Computing the Wasserstein distance finds the optimal transport plan from one set of samples to another. That is, given the distance between each sample from one distribution to each sample from the other distribution, computing the Wasserstein distance calculates the optimal flow between each of these samples. To use this for classification, we compute the Wasserstein distance to each distribution in the reference library, and accept the closest reference that falls below a distance threshold. This is converted to a control command by selecting the reference motion which corresponds to the accepted reference distribution. And this is sent to the prosthetic hand as a set of target motor positions. We have conducted three sets of experiments to test this controller. We first explore building a reference library, then we test the controller accuracy, finally we validate the controller on real-world tasks. To explore building a reference library, we recorded references from 11 common actions. Then we computed the Wasserstein distance between each of the references. The first reference in the library is selected as the one with the largest average distance to other references. The next reference to be added is selected as the one with the greatest minimum distance to the references already in the library. This is then repeated until the library is complete. We found that 1 disabled and 10 non-disabled participants could produce up to 9 distinguishable references in this way. References from the disabled participant are significantly closer together. This highlights that common actions for non-disabled users may not translate well to disabled users. To test the accuracy of the controller during use, we record six references. For non-disabled participants, these were recorded congruent to the desired motion of a prosthetic hand whereas for the disabled participant, non-congruent actions were used to achieve distinguishable references. 
Then, participants repeated each action 10 times in a random order, and up to two recalibrations of the controller were allowed. From this, the controller accuracy was calculated. Non-disabled participants achieved an average accuracy of 89.9%, and tripod grip caused the most false positive results. The disabled participant achieved an average accuracy of 86.7%, and the rest action caused the most false positive results due to muscle weakness. The final experiment performed was to validate the controller on real-world tasks. We used the Olympic hand as a testing platform, with the addition of a powered forearm, and a custom attachment block and socket for non-disabled and disabled participants respectively. Participants completed the Jebson Taylor hand function test, which includes tasks that are designed to represent a variety of activities of daily living. Here we can see participants completing the first task, writing, the second task, simulated page turning, the third task, picking up small objects, The fourth task, simulated feeding. The fifth task, stacking checkers. The sixth task, picking up large light objects. And finally, the seventh task, picking up large heavy objects. Looking at the results of the Jebson Taylor hand function test, we find that four factors influence participant performance. User expertise, how familiar the user is with the prosthesis. Classifier latency, the time taken for the controller to classify a pattern of muscle activity. Motion latency, the time taken for the prosthesis to execute the desired motion. And mechanical features, the mechanical characteristics of the prosthesis that influence grasp success or failure. All participants were physically able to complete every task and we can further understand each task's result by looking at the performance factors identified. If we look at J1 and J4, writing and simulated feeding, we can see that the disabled participant is considerably better than non-disabled participants when using the Olympic hand. This is because the static grasp used in these tasks is a skill that is easily transferred from a body-powered prosthesis to the Olympic hand. And therefore, the difference between disabled and non-disabled participant performance can be resolved as user expertise. In all tasks, the disabled participant using their body-powered prosthesis outperformed all participants using the Olympic hand. The reason for this varies depending on the task. In tasks involving small objects, such as J2, J3 and J5, the amount of distance that each finger must travel in order to close the hand is quite large, and therefore motion latency has an impact on the performance of these tasks. In tasks J6 and J7, the objects grasped are large, and therefore the distance that each finger must travel in order to grasp the object is relatively small. In these tasks, classifier latency contributes significantly to the time increase. Finally, the mechanical design of the fingers of the Olympic hand means that it may require several attempts before a precision grasp is achieved. This compounds the effects of motion latency and classifier latency, and accounts for much of the time difference observed for J3 and J5. In conclusion, this work presents a myoelectric prosthetic hand controller that achieves discrete control with minimal user data. Calibration time was greatly reduced for this controller to under one minute. The controller was validated on real-world tasks and key task performance factors were identified. Future work will investigate reducing these, in particular motion latency and improving the mechanical features of the Olympic hand. This work was supported by the UKRI Centre for Doctoral Training in AI for Healthcare. The authors would like to thank the Alex Lewis Trust and Koala for their support. Thank you for watching.